Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f*** up. Michael Chandler versus Justin Gaethje. Dana White was talking about it almost at the press conference after Michael Chandler finally speaks up. He said, I think Gaethje Chandler, probably the biggest fan favorite fight on the entire planet right now. I think he becomes a part of my highlight reel or I become a part of his highlight reel and both of us come forward and enjoy a good old-fashioned passionate scrap. That's how he's wired. That's how I'm wired. Is there any more exciting fight than that? I don't know if this if it's the most exciting fight, but it's a fantastic fight. It's a logical fight. And I respect Michael Chandler for calling him out. I really do. You know, I mean, that's a tough fight. Chandler came in, looked great. We know, lost to Charles Oliveira, just got knocked out, in fact. You know, to take to, to go out there and call out Justin Gagey, that's impressive because as we know, Gage is not an easy fight for anybody not named Khabib. Sorry, an easy fight for yeah, that's right. Anyway, if you could be, it's easy. If you're not Khabib, you're fucked. Okay, so Justin Gage is the man, and he's going to be very, very hungry. You know, and he feels like he's a champion in waiting. As we know, he's got tremendous wrestling, heavy hands. His last performance against Tony Ferguson, his hands looked incredible. I'm going to say something now that might be insulting to Tony, but I don't want it to be. But remember how good Gage looked against Tony Ferguson, and we were like, "Wow, his boxing was incredible." Of course. Has does does that performance mean less? seen the last two performances of Tony Ferguson. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it looked like, wow, Justin Gagey, he's got hands like Floyd Mayweather. Or, you know, the boxing was crisp. Floyd Mayweather is a bloody stupid exaggeration, but you know what I'm saying. I'm just trying to make a point. He looked very, very good. But Tony, you know, is 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 he struggled. He's, he's lost three in a row now. What do you think of that statement? So I think Tony's... Or a question. Whole, so Tony's whole, like, career was built off of or that at least that impressive win streak that made him the dark horse of the division was built off of taking a tremendous amount of damage fighting through it and then continuing to soldier on i think justin gaethje getting that out of tony where you finally saw the boogeyman shake his head and say no moss no moss uh that to me is where you turn the page on tony ferguson and i question whether or not benil dariush is the you know like the 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 number one pound but you know what i mean like the the yeah yeah i think that's where the downslide starts but Gaethje no I, I think that was impressive yeah you're right I think that question what I just asked should be posed to the performance of Benil Dariush more than Justin Gaethje yeah you're right and you know and, and for Tony you gotta love that guy Tony Ferguson yeah I, I forget the exact wording of it but he came out recently and said hey I'm not done I'm going nowhere you know I'm, I'm still gonna be the champ he still has that firm belief in himself you know which is which is what you got to have, you know, if he's going to go out there and be a champion, even though some people might be thinking he's crazy or whatever, um, he still believes. He still believes, and that makes you very dangerous. And I just want to say something. Um, when I fought at UFC 186, it's in my documentary that gets co- comes out soon. Uh, Ariel Hawani talks about this because when I fought CB Dalloway, UFC 186, I sat down in this hotel room with Ariel and I, I laid it all out. I said, I'm going to beat CB Dalloway. I said, I'm going to fight again, I'll fight again, and then this time next year, I'm going to be middleweight champion of the world. And I didn't know this at the time, but Harry, but Ariel says it on the documentary. He's like, this guy's out of his mind. What is he thinking? There's no way. Uh, I hate to say it to you, Bispin, but your career's on the downslide. You're losing fights. You're not winning them all. Anyway, the point I'm making is that I believed in myself, and I was able to turn it around, much to the disbelief of the popular of the masses. You know what I mean? Um, there's no reason why Tony couldn't do it. He went on a 12 fight win streak, but I do believe that potentially we have seen the best of him, but you never know. So I I did want to ask you that because at what point does that championship mindset start to work against you, right? Where you're like, where you have the confidence of somebody who at one point was without a doubt the baddest man on the planet at your weight class, right? Like somebody like Tyron Woodley or Johnny Hendricks who kept coming back for fights well past their their title run because they still believed that they could make that run. At, at what point does that like start working against you and, and you it becomes hard to be real with, with where you're at? Yeah, well, I, it's it's all on an individual basis, but generally, or, or one thing I would say is where it works against you is because because fighters need protecting from themselves, right? Fighters always want to fight the best guys. They want to fight the number one contender and all the rest of it. Tony Ferguson was there fighting for an interim title. Now he's lost three in a row. He should be taking comeback fights you know what i mean but because of that championship mindset and because he wants to be a contender and still wants to be in those conversations 
He's fighting the best guys out there. He just fought Charles Oliveira that bloody went and won the championship. He fought Justin Gagey. Who was the other one that he lost to? Sorry, but Obadil yeah, Darius, another guy that's in, you know, he's closing the gap on, you know, contender status. What Tony needs is to go away and rebuild his career on some lower level guys. You know what I mean? Maybe guys that are ranked, you know, closer to number 15. There's no shame in that. That happens in boxing all the time. You know what I mean? You lose a championship fight and then you, you're taking on someone that's, you know, it's a, it's called a comeback fight. It's not called a title fight. It's not called a number one contender fight. It's called a comeback fight. You know, but because Tony and a lot of fighters believe in themselves so much that, no, no, give me the toughest guy. Give me the toughest guy. Yeah, that's what I want. Because if I win, I'm right back in the mix. But if you lose, which there's a good chance of, you're fucked. Because now it's four in a row. One's bad, two's bad, three's pretty bad. You know, four is like people start talking about retirement now. Do you know what I mean? So Tony has to play this next phase of his life very carefully. Being the man that he is, he's going to want the toughest fight. But I don't think that's the smartest thing. Um, do, I'm on. just wondering, do guys ever do that? Like go to the matchmakers and be like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not really interested in top five fights right now. Like, can I... I, I, I want to put together a run. Like, I want to show you guys that I can get there. But right now, like, I, it, these top five fights are not really where I'm at in my career. Yeah, Has well, that, if I, heard I, of I, doing that? I, I don't know if they have. It's probably the opposite. I only ever did the opposite of that. But that's where you need a manager. That's where you need a manager to protect yourself. Sorry, protect you from yourself. Because that's number one. That's what a fighter should say. Even if they don't mean it. You have to say that, okay? You have to say that, and you need a good manager. Hopefully, they do mean that, and you need a good manager that will step in and have a word with the UFC. Number one, if you're saying to Sean Shelby or Mick Maynard, oh, I don't want that guy. I want an easier fight. That's not what you want to hear. That's not the spirit <laughs> you want to hear. And also... They're not in the habit of giving you easier fights just because you say you want an easier fight. That sends the wrong message. And, you know, far be it for me to speak for Mick or Sean, but I would assume if a fighter's coming to them and saying, hey, 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 give me a really favorable matchup. Give me a good stylistic matchup. Yeah, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. They're not going to go, yeah, do you know what? I will. Let's screw somebody else and give them a bad matchup so you do better. Yeah, it, it doesn't work like that. But that's, to answer your question, that's where a manager comes in and a manager has to have those difficult conversations with their fighter and then they have to relay it back to the UFC and say, hey, look, listen, I'm thinking I'm a fighter here, okay? Yeah, he wants to fight for in a number one contender fight or whatever, but he's not ready. And I got to protect him from himself. So unfortunately, instead of having him as a co-main event, let's maybe have him as the main, uh, the, the opener to the pay-per-view or a fight night or a prelim headliner or whatever it is, you know? You, you got to think. That's why fighters need protecting from themselves. Um, just engaging Michael Chandler is what we were talking about. But uh, so yeah, great fight. I mean, I like Michael Chandler doing all the right things there, saying all the right things. He just had a tough loss, but he's calling out a very, very tough opponent. You know, I like Michael Chandler. I, I guess it came across that I didn't because I was rooting for Oliveira so much. Or I, I had this realization. I spoke about it. And I was like, that's why. Because Oliveira was time served. Chandler wasn't. You know what I mean? But if he continues with this attitude, taking out guys like Justin Gage and whatnot, he will be time served pretty soon. Well, he, you know, two things about Chandler that really impressed me this week. You know, he, he came out and made the case. He's like, look, I for sure want to fight again before the end of this year. I think Gaethje makes the most sense. Uh, and that would give him three fights within a calendar year, plus the making weight to be the backup for Khabib versus Justin Gaethje. I mean, that is an impressive resume for your rookie year in the company to have, you know, a, a backup for a title fight, a massive fight against Dan Hooker, a title fight, and then a, a fan favorite fight against somebody like Gaethje. That's incredible. That's like what heroes are made of. You know what I mean? Um, oh. Yeah. And the other thing I thought was super duper cool about Michael Chandler. Did you by any chance see this MMA on point did a video where he sat down and watched it and broke down every single thing that he did right and every single thing that he did wrong for the Oliveira fight? I did not see that. Uh, I, I saw it advertised. I saw people talking about it, but I've, I'm a very busy man, Harrington. Listen, I, a, a lot of fights happen. A lot of fighters have bad performances. A lot of fighters get finished. I haven't got time to sit around watching each one of them <laughs> explaining to the world why they lost and making excuses for it and saying, you know, I had him here, but here's what happened here, why he got me. Listen, you got beat, fucking, you know, I mean, that's great. It's, it's real. It's raw. It's all the rest of it. But still, I can't watch every time someone does that. So to answer your question, no, I didn't. Well, I me as a, as a stupid did. mark and a casual and a real dumb dumb, it hit me right in the feels. And I was like, damn, I like Michael Chandler a whole lot. Um, so he's a likable guy. 
He really is. Yeah. Yeah. No, he really is. He, he's, he's by. I've yet to meet him, but everybody says he's great. He comes across well. He carries himself with class. You know, he's a great guy. He's a really and he's a good fighter. You know, but I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm not sure Justin Gage is a good, good idea for him. To be quite frank, I don't think he wins that fight. I don't think he wins that fight against Justin Gage. And then it's like, okay, then the only reason I say that, listen, I'm sure he can compete. But you want me to pick a winner? I'll say I think Justin Gagey probably wins that fight. I don't know that for sure, but at this early stage, I would lean towards Justin Gagey. And the reason why that's so risky for Chandler is because now they start talking. Oh, was it just a flash in the pan? Was it a lucky punch that he landed against landed against Hooker? You know what I mean? All these questions present themselves then. Whereas, and again, if he wants to fight for the belt, beating Justin Gagey will be the fastest track to that. But if I was him, I just slow slow you roll a little bit you know what i mean again as i just said have a comeback fight don't have a number one contender fight straight away but as the saying goes he's here for a good time not a long time you know so we'll see okay so my question is if he goes out there and has like justin gaethje's legendary for his wars right like he's got the the two fights uh, against eddie out Al- uh, was two against eddie alvarez or two against yeah. i can't remember exactly what the what the metric was but he has wars and wars and wars with all the top lightweight contenders if chandler goes out there and puts on a fan-friendly performance and loses a, a decision to justin gaethje and he it wins fight of the night and possible fight of the year contender I don't think that hurts his profile all that much. Do you, like cuz he did knock down Oliveira in that fight. He came pretty close to being to being the the lightweight champion of the world and I think the hardcores at least will recognize like yeah, this guy is is should be within these rankings, no? Listen, I don't think any fighter on the planet wants only the recognition recognition of the hardcores on the planet. You know, and that's all well and good. And it is great to have that. And it feels nice as a fighter that that the fans that watch the sport that truly understand it, they know who you are. They know what you're capable of. You know what I mean? And that's nice. And it is comforting. But generally you want, you want to be the best. You want to be the champion. You want all the adoration and the fames and the riches that come with that. You know, being the champion of the world. You know, if, if you're in those kind of conversations, He's almost there, right? He's he's got a big reputation. He fought for the belt. He came up short. Same with Justin Gage. All these guys that are clamoring for a title fight, they all want to be the champ. They don't want to be the number two guy. They don't want to be the number three guy. You know what I mean? Because, okay, you come so close, but yet so far. Because guess what? Being the number two guy is awesome, but you don't get a fucking fraction compared to what the number one guy gets. And you don't, you don't go down in the history books. You know, yes, you will be remembered and maybe you'll be, some people may say, oh, remember that guy? He was a good fighter. But if you become champion of the world and certainly if you can defend it as well, you know, then now, now you're talking legendary status and you're talking about your legacy being set in stone. Because for a lot of people, when you fight as well, they do want, to be remembered. They want their career to be respected afterwards. And the kind of things that you're talking about that, yeah, you will be respected, but unfortunately will only be to a lot of hardcore people. A lot of fans are fair weather. They only know the champions and the big people or the, maybe the people from their neck of the woods or their hometown or whatever, you know, but, but still listen, Michael Chandler, I respect what he's doing. I think it's a sensational fight and I wish him the best. I do. He carries himself with class. I'm a fan of the guy. All right, let's hear from one of our sponsors, IP Vanish. We are welcoming them back to today's show. IP Vanish have been a long-time sponsor of ours, so it's great to have them back. So let me tell you about IP Vanish. If you care about the security of your online activity, the easiest way to protect yourself is with IP Vanish VPN, 